So let's start with what is included with your DSTS optical fiber sensor system. Naturally, you have your two main modules, the optics module and the computer for analyzing the data. To power these units, you have an optical block for the module and you have a power cord for the computer. To allow the two devices to communicate with one another, we include two cables for trigger and sensors, as well as a USB cable for communicating. Those make up our electrical connections. Next we have the optical connections between the device and the fiber that you're doing the sensing with. Depending on which model you use, we either provide four cables along with four sleeve-through adapters. These cables go be between the instrument and your sensing fiber. Again, the whole purpose of these is that you want to make sure that your instrument is safe and if anything gets damaged, there are the inexpensive cables, not the expensive instrument. Again, depending on which model you work with, you'll either receive cables or you'll receive these male to female adapters, which perform the same function as the cables and sleep-through adapters combined. Next, let's talk about the software. You will get three CDs. These CDs include the software and drivers for the instrument, as well as emergency backup discs, which are used in case there's a failure of the instrument. This software comes pre-installed on the computer already, so you do not have to install the software when you receive the instrument. Finally, we have the documentation. A detailed manual is provided with the instrument, which gives clear instructions on how the hardware and software works and how to make readings and interpret data with the Breon sensor. A quick setup guide is also included to show you uh, when you open the unit how to hook up all the hardware and optical connections. We also include three documents discussing the optical cables, explaining how to clean and take care of the connections, and warning you that dirty connections can damage the instrument. We feel it's very important that you take the time to read these documents. The number one reason for returns of instruments is due to damage or dirty connections. Taking proper care of the connections between the Breon sensor and your setup will ensure maximum operating lifetime and minimum downtime for your setup. We also include two documents describing safe uh, practices to ensure that the Breon sensor doesn't go down should there be a power failure and also what to do if there is a hardware crash and you need to use the emergency recovery desk. Finally, each instrument comes with a certificate of compliance showing exactly what the specifications are for the unit you bought as well as tests showing that the instrument performs correctly. Now not included with the instrument is a, as a keyboard, monitor, or mouse. You can get these at any uh, computer store. Any standard Windows compatible keyboard, mouse, and monitor will work with our instrument. If you need to, we, we can supply these devices separately. Also not included with the instrument are cleaning tools for taking care of the patch boards and inspecting them. Again, those are sold separately and we'll show those in a separate video. So now that we've shown you what hardware comes with the instrument, why don't we roll up our sleeves and get to work.
All right, so let's start putting our, D, our sensor system together. I've arranged the two boxes, the optical module on top of the computer. This is the normal way that you will want to install them. Okay, so we'll start off with these two cables right here. One goes from this input one signal down here, and it just screws in. It's a bit of a tight squeeze. You may want some of those little fingers to do this. But once you have it screwed in, it should just go in all the way. And you want it to be finger tight. Okay? You're not trying to force it on. Just finger tight. Once this is on, that gets hooked up to signal out on the top unit. And again, just finger tight. No need to force it. The next one goes between the trigger on the computer and trigger out up here. There we go. Once these two connections are made, the next one is with the USB cable, which connects from up here to any of the USB connections down below. Next we hook up our power power cable for the computer down here. Power cable for the module right there. Finally connections for the keyboard. The mouse and the computer monitor. And those are all your connections. So, before we hook up our optical cables, let's talk about the front panel connections and features on the, our DSTS system. Starting over here, you have the main power for the optical module. Here we have our laser enabled key switch. A separate key is provided and unless that key is inserted and turned to the on position, neither laser within the DSTS system will operate. We have five indicator lights here. First one for power. The second one to show that the system is in a safe operating temperature range. A third indicator light to indicate that the system is stable and ready for taking measurements. Next we have two indicator lights to show whether laser 1 or laser 2 is on and operating within the system. For the system to take measurements, both of these lights need to be on. Over here we have our optical connections. This instrument is set up for use of E2000 connections. Okay. Depending on which model you purchase, you may instead get a system with FC connectors. Okay? These are the most common connector types in the marketplace today for sensing applications. Finally, in the middle, between the connections for channel 1 and the connections for channel 2, we have a temperature indicator to show you what is the operating temperature of the system at any given time. That's the optical module. 
down below, we have the computer module. You undo the thumb, thumb screws, you, you reveal this protective lid showing the instrument connections. On the front here, you have uh, a power and reset. You have uh, a DVD uh, tray here. So if you need to install hard software onto the instrument, you can, uh, you can insert it there. You have USB connections here as well that you could use, for example, for hooking the keyboard to the front or, say, using a USB stick. But for normal operation, you don't need to keep this open and you would just leave it shut as is. Now before we power up, let's make our optical connections. Again, it's important to make sure that your connectors are clean. Before starting this video, I already inspected the instrument connections. So now I'm going to check the connections on my patch cords. To do so again, we just take a mating sleeve, plug the connector in, hook in our camera, and make sure on our screen that we have a clean fiber surface and clean surrounding area. This is a good fiber. So we'll just take off the protective cap and plug our fiber in. We repeat the process for the other cable. Again, we have a good clean connection. Hook that in over here. And these two cables will be connected to our sensing fiber for making the measurements. Keep the two covers that cover, protect the fiber in a safe place so that if you take out your cables later, you put them in to protect the fiber ends. Always protect and cover fiber ends when not in use. If you're working with the FC connectors and you get the uh, male to female receptacles, the process is the same. Use the video camera station to check both ends of the device and only after you've shown that these are clean and the mating connection is also clean, connect this receptacle to the device. On FC connectors, there is a small key and there's a matching keyway on the receptacle. Make sure when you're mating them that the keyway goes into the receptacle. And this is where you would hook up your sensing fiber. Once your fibers are installed, you can now safely hook the other ends up to the fiber you're using for your sensing application and turn on the instrument. I'd like to point out that the computer is set up so that when you turn on the power for the first time, 
it will automatically turn on and boot up. If you listen closely, you can actually hear the computer operating right now. The system is a standard Windows 7 operating system computer. So anyone who's familiar with using Windows 7 can use this instrument. <laughs>